Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Alfred from Practical Code Academy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create a custom range slider. As you can see, this is the range sliders that we're going to create it together. When I change the slider value, as you can see, the value get reflected here. It's go from zero all the way to 100, and you can change this values. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can create the horizontal sliders and also how you can uh, create the vertical sliders as well. Uh, I hope you're going to like this video. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, subscribe now to get more videos like this. Let's get started. Okay, in my desktop here, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it slider. Inside the slider, I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code. I'm going to create three files, the markup file, the style sheet, and the JavaScript file. Inside the index.html, I'm going to create a boilerplate using Emmet by typing click simulation mark and press enter. I'm going to change the title here. I'm going to call it custom range slider. Inside the body here, I can add a title, which in that case is going to be h1, which is also I'm going to say custom range slider. I'm going to need a div with a class of container. Inside the container, I'm going to have a slider wrapper. And the slider wrapper, technically, it's wrapping the slider here, or the range uh, slider here, and the span that's next to it, which having the value. So it's wrapping both of them together. So I'm going to have another div with the class of slider wrapper. So as I said, it consists of an input with a type range. And a span. And in that case, I'm going to leave the span empty because I want to load it dynamically from the JavaScript. However, for the input here, I'm going to use a couple of attributes. So the first attribute is the minimum, which is, should be 0 then the maximum should be 100. And I'm going to give it a class of slider. And that's it. That's if you want to create one slider, we're going to start with one. Let's open the live server and see how it's going to look like. And this is how it's going to look like. So I'm going to put the screen here on the side. And we're going to start customizing this slider. So I'm going to go to the style, body. I want to set the background color to white, which is, is the default. It's currently white. I want to set the font family to Arial. For the H1 here, I'm going to give it font size of 3 rem, make it bigger. And it's not changing because I forgot to link my styling sheet. And let's get back here. Let's link to the style sheet, style.css. Also, let's add our JavaScript file here using the script tag and create the source, which is our main.js. Once we save that, and now it get bigger and also the font get changed. Well, that's it done. Let's do text align center. And also we want to do margin. 5 rem top and bottom, 0 left and right, and that's going to put it in the center. OK, for the slide wrapper, slider wrapper, we want to do the position relative, uh, because later when we do the span, we want to configure the span here, or the text, or the number that's going to be next to the slider as position uh, absolute to the slider wrapper. The margin 
will be one rem. Okay, now let's start the slider itself. So I'm gonna do slider. And I wanna make the appearance none. So I'm gonna do appearance none. I'm also gonna do the, the prefix for it, which is WebKit. Next, I wanna set the width to 4, 450 pixels. The height, I'm gonna do 40 pixels. The background color, I'm gonna do white. And the box shadow, I'm gonna do inset. And I wanna do two pixels, two pixels, 10 pixels blur. And I'm gonna do RGPA, zero, 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 zero point four. Here we go. Border radius, I wanna make it rounded from the corner. In that case, I'm gonna do 25 pixels. And now we're reshaping the slider. This is the outer part. Now we're gonna need to change the thumb, the thumb here. This is the thumb that we're gonna change. But notice I, I forgot to put the outline none. So I'm gonna do right now. Outline none. To change the, the, the thumb here of the range, we're gonna select the slider. And we're gonna use the WebKit slider thumb pseudo class to target this thumb here. And this is only for uh, Chrome. So this pseudo class here, and I think I have a mistake in it. It's WebKit. Yeah, forget the first dash here. WebKit slider thumb. This is for only for Chrome to uh, style this, this thumb of the uh, slider. So I want to create the appearance none. So WebKit, I want to make it disappear. Appearance none. Appearance none. I want to do position relative. The width, 50 pixels. Height, 50 pixels. Border radius, 50%. And for the background color, I want to do radial gradient. Actually, for the background, not the background color. Radial gradient. And I'm going to go from blue to navy. And I want to make, actually make this a lighter blue. So I'm going to change the ho hover over it, change it here, get a lighter blue here, and change it to hex by click here. That now I'm going to have this hex value. So I'm going to go from, from light bl blue to a dark blue. And that's what we get here. This is the radial gradient for our uh, knob of the slider. Okay, perfect. You can change the color, of course, whatever color you want. However, this only work was Chrome. This is the pseudo selector for Chrome. We want to do the same thing for the pseudo selector for Firefox. So I'm going to copy everything here. I'm going to put it here. And for Firefox, it called, I'm going to do the Firefox uh, prefix, which MOZ range. Pump. And by the way, this is not going to work for Internet Explorer. It's going to only work for uh, Chrome and Firefox. For Internet Explorer, it's going to be a little bit more work. Uh, I just want to make it a short video, easy video. Okay, next step. Let's uh, access the span here next to it. And, and I, right now, I don't have any values in it, but to see it, I can add here, let's say 50 to style it. And now we can access this pen by accessing the slider wrapper and the pen inside it 
And what I want to do is position it as absolute and the parent is relative. So now we can do the bottom 50% and then transform and translate it on the Y axis to 50%. And that should center it. Now it's centered. And also we can do margin left for 20 pixels to put a little bit space between the slider and this value. Good. And now also we can increase the font size, which in that case, I'm gonna make it two rem. Great. Well, that's been said. Now we wanna reflect whatever value when I change the slider here. To do that, we need JavaScript. And for the JavaScript file here, the first step I'm gonna do hold or grab this slider from the DOM. So I'm gonna do constant and I'm gonna store it in a, in a variable or constant in that case, slider equal document dot query selector. And for the query selector, I'm gonna select the whole wrapper, both of them. So I'm gonna do the slider wrapper. So next I wanna check every time the user try to change the slider. So I need to add an event listener. In that case is gonna be slider, add event listener. And the event listener I wanna listen to it is the input. And every time the user try to input this value or change it. What I wanna do is I wanna access the slider last element, last element child, which in that case, the span here. And I want to do the inner, I want to set the inner HTML to be equal, the slider first element child dot value. So I will take the value from the first element here, which is the slider, and put it inside the inner HTML of the second child, or in that case, last child, which is the span. So I will take the value from here and view it here every time the user change or make an input here. I'll save this and that now let's test it. Okay, it looked like it's working. Can go from zero to 100. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty easy. Okay, the question now, what if I have multiple sliders like this, custom sliders? So if I took this guy here and I copy it down one more time. Now I have two of them. The first one will work, the second one will not gonna work. And the reason for that, that when you do the query selector, it will only grab the first element uh, that having the slider wrapper class, which in that case here, the first one. To get all of them, I'm gonna need to do query selector all. And that will return array of all the elements that I have. And as you can see now, both are not working because it's returning uh, an array of all the elements that are here for the sliders. So since I have an array, I can look through them using for each, but let me first, it's, now it's not gonna call slider, gonna be called sliders. So sliders dot for each slider, for each slider, I wanna run the following, which I'm gonna take this, copy, I'm gonna paste it here. Now let's test it, and the first one is working, second one is working. That's great. Even if you have one of them, not two, it's still gonna work. So if I take this one out, and I save it, it's still gonna work. But now your JavaScript file is adapted to, you can add as many as you can of this elements and it, it will accommodate that. And it, it will make it work, not only for one, but as multiple as you can add. Well, that's for the horizontal sliders. Let's add a couple of them. In that case, I have four of them. Perfect. Let's see how we can actually do the vertical sliders. For the vertical sliders, you need to change the, the, the container itself. So I'm gonna copy everything here. I'm gonna also do four of them. Copy it down. And I wanna add a new class that will change the container itself to make it vertical. So all of them will make it vertical. So I'm gonna add the vertical class. <laughs> And now they are uh, still horizontal, but when I go to the 
CSS here, and I do vertical. And for the vertical class, what I need to do is transform and technically rotate the whole div 90 degree. And once I do that, as you can see, it's going to be rotating 90 degree here down. Now let's change the span itself. So the vertical, any span inside it, and in that case, the span over here, as you can see, it's also rotated as well. So I need to flip it back. So I need to do transform, rotate, and in that case, 90 degree. I'm gonna change a little bit, translate X, I'm gonna give it 30%, and now they're gonna center it. Also, let's give it a width. So I'm gonna do a width of 50 pixels. Good. Now, it's still working. Let me put the screen up. As you can see, yeah. This is all the way down here. I think I know what is the mistake here when I go for, we didn't set the container here. We didn't set the values for the container. We didn't customize the container. So let me go here to the container. I want to set the max width to be 1100 pixel. Text align, I'm going to center everything. And the margin to be auto. And the problem now, as you can see, they're on top of each other. What I need to fix this problem, all I need to do is just want to display them as block. And this is, should be negative 20 pixel. Push it down a little bit. And that's it. As you can see, and now it's working perfect. So technically, if you want it vertical, all you need to do, just add to the container the vertical class and it will flip them for you. If you want them horizontal, by default, they are horizontals. Okay, that's it, guys. I hope you liked the video. And if you do like it, hit the like button. And um, if you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe now. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.